Let's talk about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a progressive neurodegenerative disease affecting mainly the motor neurons. It can be comorbid with frontotemporal dementia, which is the most common dementia seen in ALS. Most cases are sporadic, but about 5 to 10% of them can be familial. And in these cases, genetic testing is offered. The most common genes that can be found in familial cases are the SOD1 superoxide dismutase or the C9 ORF72 genes. The onset of symptoms typically happens in a patient in their 60s or 70s. So the clinical hallmark is asymmetric weakness with both upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron signs. So upper motor neuron signs include hyperreflexia, such as a positive Babinski, or spasticity. Lower motor neuron signs will include atrophy and fasciculations. Bulbar symptoms are fairly common and can include dysphagia, dysarthria, and pseudobulbar palsy. And respiratory insufficiency can also occur as the disease progresses, but sometimes it can also be the presenting symptom. One thing to note is that the extraocular muscles are typically spared until much later in the course of the disease, and if you see extraocular muscles being affected in a patient, you might think about other diseases such as myasthenia gravis. For evaluation, the EMG will show acute and chronic denervation and re -innervation. Acute denervation can be shown by fibrillations, fasciculations, and positive sharp waves, while chronic denervation and re is shown by large amplitude, long duration, complex motor unit action potentials, and reduced recruitment. The nerve conduction studies are typically normal, and an MRI brain and spinal cord are typically normal as well. However, if someone has frontotemporal dementia, then the MRI brain may show a degeneration in the frontal and temporal lobes. So for treatment, the most important disease modifying agent to know is riluzole, and that is because it improves mortality. However, it does also cause elevation of liver enzymes, so those will need to be monitored during treatment. There's one other medication available called Idaravone, and it is a free radical scavenger that slows the decline in function. Unfortunately, it can cause allergic reactions in people with asthma. So as the disease progresses, you may develop respiratory insufficiency, and non-invasive ventilation such as CPAP can become indicated Usually the respiratory insufficiency is worse at night, but then you may need CPAP also during the day as the, the disease progresses. The tracheostomy later on can also improve the quality of life. It's also recommended for people with ALS to receive the respiratory vaccines, the pneumococcal and influenza vaccinations. A multidisciplinary approach with physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, and dietitians will also be helpful for the patient as dysphagia and weight loss can be significant in the disease. A gastrostomy tube can be offered in these cases. For symptomatic treatment, muscle spasms can be relieved with mexilatine or anti-epileptics, spasticity, may be relieved with baclofen or tidazanidine or botulinum toxin. Drooling can be relieved with anticholinergics and pseudobulbar affect can be relieved with dextromethorphan quinidine. For prognosis, unfortunately most patients do still die within three to five years of diagnosis even with riluzole. However, some patients get lucky and can live for 10 years or more. 
the most common cause of death will be respiratory failure.